This video is an additional video to the APEX series that's shown here that dealt with APEX 18.1. We had 30 APEX videos and some related database and SQL videos that went along with the APEX videos. But that was all about 18.1. What we now will do is take a look at the difference between 18.1 and 18.2. So we will see some of the features that have changed as we work with 18.2. We'll create a master detail form for persons and employees. This is based on the animal shelter scenario that we use throughout the 18.1 APEX video series. What you see in this video relates to what, what we saw in the original series, APEX 14, 15, and 16. We will add a search for the primary key value once we have the master detail from 18.2. We will display the primary key value from a page item on the web page. I'm logged in to Apex as a developer. So for those of you that have been following the original series for 18.1, I just want to point out that I have upgraded to Apex 18.2. We see that in the lower right corner. I'm also in a different workspace, so this application will have a slightly different look than the original Apex 18.1 series. I'm in the application, and I'm going to run it, and I have reports and forms about animals, and I have reports and forms about people. In 18.2, you get some changes to the master detail form that are going to be very useful to you. Here is an example of what we originally saw when we created a master detail form in 18.1, where I select one of these people from the persons table, go to single row view, see the person-related data for Teresa Sanchez and any employee-related data. If I go to version 2 of the master detail, then what I see is a left side pane where I can search, take that search value off, so I could type in Sanchez and then select one of these and see in the top half of, of the right side region I see the person data and then the related employee data. So for Yolanda, I see person data but no employee data because Yolanda is not an employee. In, in version 3, I can pick a person from the interactive grid. Then I get in the top half of the page a master form for the person data and in the lower half of the page, I get the detailed information about the related employee data. So how did I create these? Let's go to edit page 19. It doesn't matter which page it is. And let's step through quickly and look at the differences. I'm going to add a page by clicking the plus sign. And notice right here, before I even select form, I have master detail as an option, as opposed to Looking at the video I have for, for Apex 14, we don't see the master detail option until we have selected forms. So the level at which you see the master detail option has changed, as well as the fact that here in the 18.1 version, you have a single page, two page choice. So let me come back to 18.2 and I'll simply go to master detail. So we have these three options, and this is really nice. This is essentially what we started with when we created Master Detail in 18.1. I really like this side by side. I think that would probably be my view of choice. So I'm going to select that, and I'll let Apex number this. And for the Master Detail page name, I'll just say Persons, persons and Employees. MD for master detail. I'll have a navigation item created and put in the page section. 
So now we select a master table, which will be persons. Then we have a change here. It's asking for primary display column and secondary display column. So you don't even get a choice of picking the person ID, which is the primary key. So I'm going to select last name. I'm going to select first name. I do wish I had a choice of including the primary key. The detail table is employees. Notice we could add a, another section for a detail, and I'll do that in a separate video for 18.2. We'll do a create, save that, and run that, and this is what we get. So over here, again, I can type in Sanchez. I see two persons, two people with the name Sanchez. If I click Yolanda, I see the person data, first name, last name, so on, but no employee data. If I pick Teresa, then I do see that she is a person, a record in the person table, and she has a record in the employee table. So from my previous videos, you know that I want to see the primary key. Also, let's say that I wanted to search, and I actually don't know what the primary key value is for Teresa, but let's say it's 90010. I can't search on that. So this is something I don't like about this. I don't think being able to search by last name and first name only allows us to narrow down sufficiently for a large database. So what I want to do is add the fact that I can search on the primary key value and then over here I want to show the primary key value. So I'm going to edit this page. What I want to do is select master records and I see this coding and I'm going to click to alter that code. I want to include a search on the primary key value. So I'm going to say or purse ID is equal to and we have this page item. So in the where clause we're looking at the page item page 28 p28 underscore search. We're looking for name and we have an inexact match. So I could type in S-A-N, for example, instead of the full San Sanchez. And we're using upper functions to make sure that we have a match on upper and lower case. Everything goes to upper case. But when we're talking about numbers, that's not an issue. So X is the table alias for persons. So we put X, which is the nickname, if you will, for persons in this code x dot purse underscore id is equal to and then the page item that's a semicolon capital p28 underscore s e a r c h and i will click ok save that and run that so now i can search by a person's purse id so when i search on 910 i see kathy barnes so what I want to do now is display the primary key value. So I'll go to edit page 28 and I will scroll down and notice we have an item that's hidden and it's P28 underscore purse underscore ID. I will select that on the left side and change it from hidden to display only and save that. Uh, let's see, I will also need to add a label and save that and run that. So here we see purse ID. It's display only. So I can't click edit and then come in and edit purse ID, which of course we don't want, but we, I definitely want to be able to see this. So I see this match. So if we want to edit the person data, we could edit it and we could edit this page and use our list of values that we've seen in previous videos to provide things such as city, state, along with the zip code. If we want to edit the employee data, we would click and get a modal form that pops up 
And again, we could edit this and provide list of values for role and status. I really like this a lot. I think this is a great improvement over what we've had for master detail.